Welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob. And today I've got to tell you, there's something about the timing with what's going on with the SEC and regulation, which is it's just uncanny. And what I'm talking about, of course, is uh, as you may have seen throughout the, the YouTube and the Twitter spaces and Twitter and all the social media outlets, that, of course, the SEC had dropped the hammer on Kraken and stopped uh, uh, staking for retail investors in the United States. And we did a video this morning where I said, hey, you know, on some parts of what Gary talked about, uh, he's right. And I could have sworn <laughs> I could have sworn that I get ripped apart for this one because it didn't make sense what he was talking about. And uh, a lot of you listened to what Gary talked about and said, yeah, on some of these points, he is correct. Now, he's not correct 100%. Let's just make that uh, extremely clear. But for every story, there's always two sides. So you got to take a look at the flip side, the good and the bad. And of course, uh, after this happened, what uh, we could see with the markets is, of course, a little bit of pullback. Not surprising, but not catastrophic, like I thought may have happened. So there's a little bit of resiliency in the market, and that is good to see. And then on top of that, why I talk about the things that are happening, and of course, I think that uh, this is just getting started. This is from uh, Mario Noffel, and he runs the a lot of the Twitter spaces, a lot of big names, big celebrities, and uh, big people in the crypto space. And uh, he said, look, this is just in the, the SEC, the New York Department of Financial Services and the OCC, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, will be bringing a myriad of enforcement targeting exchanges, banks, and tokens. Why is this important? It's important because like with exchanges, it's not like they're looking at like the projects themselves. It's the centralized exchanges. It's the greedy people. And of course, those people have to be flushed out. The banks, Silvergate, and the things that are going on, we'll get in that in a second. It's about money laundering. And yes, amazingly, that does happen in banks. And of course, with tokens, we'll see how that all works out. But I can see how this could be just the start about what they want to do. Gary Gensley in the charge, expect significant announcements in the coming days and weeks. And not to be outdone, guy over at Coin Bureau dropped this little, little nugget today and said, look, uh, Paxos, report, Paxos reportedly being investigated by the New York Department of Financial Services and uh, they are responsible uh, for PAX Gold. SEC Chairman Gary Gensler had once said that stable coins could be securities. So again, there's a lot of things that are happening, a lot of moving parts of the SEC bears down. And on top of that, there was also a story a couple of days ago, SEC warns that retirement accounts, uh, crypto stakes may be unregistered securities. I think this is the, the, the bigger issue because when people hear about retirement accounts, of course, I always think about iTrust. I have. I've been using them for two years straight now. They are a sponsor of the show, and uh, there are links in the description for affiliate links. You don't have to use them, but if you'd like to, that would help the, the show itself. But this was uh, another uh, bit of regulation that's coming down with the SEC, and you got to think to yourself, well, are they going to crack down everything? But it's all about the wording. So here's what this is. Investor alert, self-directed IRAs, and the risk of fraud. Self-directed IRAs, which is what iTrust is, uh, allow investment in a broader and potentially your riskier portfolio, such as real estate, private placement securities, precious metals, other commodities, and crypto. Investors should be mindful that investing through self-direct IRAs raises risk, blah, blah, blah. So it goes through here, quite boring stuff, but it really just comes down to this. This is what they're all hyped up about. So the SEC is saying, look, crypto assets may be securities that are offered without SEC registration or a valid exemption from registration. Gary Gensler has made no bones about it. He's like, look, I think everything is essentially a security outside of Bitcoin. And they state, many of the trading platforms, the exchanges for these crypto assets refer to themselves as exchanges, which may give investors the misimpression that they have registered with the SEC. I don't know if anybody believes that outside of crypto, but sure, I could see it. So it really just comes down to what Gary talked about in this video this morning. Again, you can watch that where I go into depth about what he talks about here. I'm not going to do it on this uh, spe specific video, but it's what he talked about later in the day. And then just so you know, what happened with Kraken? Well, they got a slap on the wrist, $30 million. I know some people would say, well, that's a lot of money. <laughs> it's not that much for how much they were pulling down. So that all comes out of this. The question then becomes, with, with Gary, like, what do they want? What is their view? And this was on Squawk Box, and I forgot the host name, uh, but he just says, look, he goes, explain it to like I'm five. Why did you guys do this and what's going on? Listen to his response and tell me if this doesn't make sense. Andrew, what Kraken was doing was asking the American public for their uh, coins, uh, crypto tokens, 
and saying, I'll give you a return, 4% to 21% returns. And the problem was they were not disclosing to the investing public uh, the risk that the investing public was entering into. And we have a basic bargain in the United States since the 1930s. You can take whatever risk you want. Companies like Kraken can offer investment contracts and investment schemes, but they have to have full fair and truthful disclosure. And this puts the investors who watch your program in a better position. That's our basic bargain. They were not complying with that basic law. And really, if you just take a uh, listen to what Gary said and take it for face value, like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. However, you have to remember uh, a couple of things. So if he's just talking about, oh, it's just 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 a, a risk problem and they just have to disclose some information. If that was only the problem with Kraken, I'm sure they would have said, look, we don't want to lose a multi-million dollar industry for just staking. And all they have to do is just disclose that there's a lot of risks. I'm sure that could be spun up by legal compliance very quickly. I think it's more about the securities and them saying, okay, these are unregistered here. These are registered securities. Uh, you need to register them. What is the guidelines? And of course, the problem is with everybody that I've talked to and everything that I've heard, it's they don't give a clear path to how to actually do that. And that is the big problem. On top of that, when he talks about we have an ability here in America that you can take as many risks as you want to, because that's just what the American way is. Well, that could be true. However, that's not really what it is. If you are an accredited investor, you can do whatever you want to do. However, if you haven't made a bunch of money, $200,000 or a couple million dollars net worth, you're not getting those opportunities. So I'm not going to sit here and have Gary just go, yeah, just this little thing. I agree with some of the things he talks about, but here's the other side of the story to give you the full picture. So on top of that, that's what he wants. And this then just, just comes down to the flip side. And the flip side is Commissioner Hester Pierce. And this, she gives us a little bit of insight about what's happening. Now, look, I like Ms. Pierce here. I like what she's doing. But I got to tell you, every time that I've heard her talk, I've actually heard her talk here in Puerto Rico. It's always the same thing. Like, you know, I really don't like what they're doing. And I'd really like not to do that. And really help us. And, but it still keeps happening. So I appreciate her efforts. I just wish that there was some more output or some more resolution to what's going on. Regardless, I'm uh, appreciative of the efforts that she does do, but it's always the same outcome. She says, today, the SEC shut down crack and staking program. The commission argues that this staking program should have been registered with the SEC as a securities offering. The more fundamental question is whether SEC registration would have been possible. Crypto-related offerings are not making it through the SEC registration pipeline. And she goes on to really clarify and say it's very difficult. And there's no clear guidelines as to how to do those things because Gary Gensler is not doing that and allowing people to come forward. Just ask Coinbase with their earn program. But there are some positives on the horizon. Uh, this is broke by uh, Frank Shaparo, And this is from uh, the chief legal officer, Paul Grewell from Coinbase. And he said, look, Coinbase's staking program is not affected by today's news. Staking on Coinbase continues to be available and staked assets continue to earn protocol rewards. What's clear is that Kraken was offering a yield product. Coinbase's staking services are fundamentally different and are not securities. And he gives us some examples. So at least that part is pretty good. So maybe they figured it out until Gary comes on and goes, no, maybe not so much. But even though Gary is part of the government, there are other people that are in different levels who are looking at this and going, this doesn't sound right. This is Tom Emmerer. And he states, and he's a representative, U.S. House. And he says, to be clear, stake enables more people to participate in building the next generation of the internet. Doesn't matter if you're an accredited investor or not, we can all stake. Gary Gensler's regulatory purgatory strategy hurts everyday Americans the most, leaving them in the dust while these opportunities are accessible offshore. And that's right, my man. We're going to get left in the dust as everybody just moves everything. You know, it's like the Bahamas, like FTX did. Real great move. And then another part of this is where even though Gary is trying to do the right job, you got to remember Gary messed up. Gary had a lot of opportunities to put the SEC in front of things and actually stop a lot of issues. And actually, and before I talk about this, it really just is summed up by by Ben's beautiful meme here, which is uh, the SEC protecting us from FTX, Luna, Three Arrows Capital, Celsius, Voyager, and BlockFi, 
And then of course, the only thing to do is crack a stick. So what this is, is you gotta remember again, I think Gary messed up. He missed an opportunity to protect or to do his job. And now he's coming full force like, okay, I'm just gonna rear it. The problem is, is because of that, he is being called before Congress. This is Rep. Bill Huizinga, nailed it. Uh, Republican, Michigan's fourth congressional district. And he just pretty much says it like this. I will link this in the description so you can read it. But really what he wants to talk about is he's like, look, you talked to the FTX and Sam Bakeman Freed. There was some really funny timing about all this. So we need all the records and communications between you and SBF, uh, between all the employees and everything that has to do with the SEC and them. And please provide that no later than 5 p.m. on Friday, Friday, February 24th. So we can get to the bottom of this. So it's not over for Gary right now. And not that I'm wishing harm anybody, but you know, you got to answer, you got to answer the bell and that's just what it comes down to. And then lastly, other good parts is it's not just America. I'm an American and I'm a, I try to be a patriot through and through, but it's not just about America. We're not the center of the world all the time, even though we think we are. And Brad Garlinghouse from Ripple really lays it out like this. He goes, remember this, he goes, look, Dubai just published an extensive new set of tech agnostic rule books for crypto market participants covering compliance standards, advertising issuance, and much more. Australia's treasury is looking to reform licensing and custody for crypto. The UK new consultation reflects the government's intent to establish a proportionate, clear framework that allows firms to innovate while maintaining financial stability. South Korea's Financial Services Commission publishes guidelines that de delineate what would be considered a security token versus a payment token, how those are separately governed, which is amazing to me that we can do this in other countries, but for America, we just can't seem to wrap our heads around it. Just a funny timing. And when I talk about timing, what I'm talking about is this, and I'm gonna use Brad's example right here. Timing, as far as the four-year cycles, you know, I'm a big believer in that. Again, as a recap, it all starts with the halving in 2012. You go a halving, a Bitcoin halving, all-time high, then things crash, then get a reset. It happened again in 2016, having all-time high dip reset. Happened again just a couple of years ago, 2020, all-time high dip and reset. As far as timing, Ripple and XRP holders, myself included, uh, they got hosed because when the SEC came after them for unregistered securities at Ripple, you know when they caught them? Around November, December of 2020. That's when that whole legal fiasco started. Can you believe it's already been? Geez, it's already been two years. Unbelievable. And they're still locked. They missed out on these enormous gains. All the XRP holders did because of Gary Gensler, what's going on. At least this time, Gensler's doing things, in my opinion, at the right time. Because let's just say that he starts to ramp up things. We're in 2023. We're in the very beginning. He ramps up things. Takes him a year or so, right? Maybe a year and a half. I don't know. And then during this time, remember, we're, we also have the outlook of a potential recession coming, which usually happens when the uh, 10 and two years uh, yield switch, which happened in uh, June, July of 2022. So take that 12 months out, we could be in 2023, maybe a recession towards the end of the year. And if that happens and regulation happens and we're all fighting, everything crashes down, great. I'm dollar cost averaging. I can't wait for that to come down because then I can pick up a bunch of cheap crypto and it takes for a little while for it to of course, the recession to, to for us to bog through that, also to go through Congress, then figure out what the heck Gary was doing, and then for them to get some actually rules as to what's a security, what's a commodity, what's a currency, what's a digital asset, and then figure it all out. And then what happens after that about a year, year and a half? Oh, we're in an all-time high time frame. So that's where I see things. And I know it sounds like some really junk timing right now, but maybe it works out in our favor. Who knows? I'm not saying this is exactly what will happen, but the timing is uncanny. So look, that does it for today's video. I would like to just make mention of two things. If you are in the Puerto Rico area on Sunday, 8 o'clock a.m., we uh, go there to volunteer for time and we walk all the shelter dogs as much as possible. So I need you guys, if you're here, to come out with me, 8 o'clock, Amigos de los Animales. Uh, the link is in the description. I'll be there at 8. We walk the dogs for about an hour. It's over on the boardwalk. It's beautiful. We go to the beach. The dogs appreciate it greatly. And I treat everybody to uh, breakfast. So if you can come out that, that would be fantastic. Also, on top of that, I had a great interview with uh, Randy over at uh, Miss Team Crypto. And uh, I got to tell you, if you're looking at the, the future of crypto, that's it right there. 
because it's pretty hard to match the energy level. And if you're an investor looking at where things are going, look to the younger generation. So I'm gonna link that interview and what she does in the description below and give her a follow and she'll be on the show next week as a matter of fact. But uh, that is it for today. So look, well, I'm a little bit longer, not as usual uh, shortened time frame, but a lot of things going on. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. All things we talk about are time sensitive, but that is it for today. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.